And we're with director Bobby Miller of the movie Master Cleanse. I've done a little research on this film, and what I put together was that this isn't just about the physical cleanse that's become all the rage these days. It's actually about a deeper cleanse that goes beyond the flesh. Uh, just tell us a little bit about the background of this story and every, about the character and so forth. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I was going... Um I tried the literal master cleanse, you know, because I like this idea of like, oh, I'm going to get all this bad stuff out of me. So it came from a real place of like, you know, I want to restart and something like that. And then I started reading um, these books and, and journal entries of people who went on the real master cleanse. And they were all very like treating it like a big, almost religious experience. And I thought that was really interesting. And then somehow uh, puppets became involved. <laughs> okay, so tell us about these these uh, puppets that you just yeah. referred to. Yeah. Um, well, I've been very coy about the movie, but you know, the puppets are real animatronics, like gremlins, stuff like that, or the Cronenberg's a the fly. These real stuff in the movie, and uh, and Johnny Galecki bonds with one of the creatures. Very emotional scene. Now, yeah. <laughs> this, now this is getting really interesting because yeah. as nerds, we are that nerd show. As nerds, yeah. we love '80s animatronics. That's a big thing That's for us. So, too. absolutely. Yeah. So, what, what was the experience in creating these animatronics? I know there's a very artistic, intricate side that goes into making those. Yeah, for sure. Well, I worked with. Um, uh, an illustrator I found on the creaturespot.com, which is a site that really does exist for creature uh, illustrators, and I worked with them, and then um, just wanting to, you know, be very specific with the designs, because again, I think of like Cronenberg, you know his movies, you know, he has a certain sensibility with his uh, creature design and stuff like that, so it's important to get something specific and interesting. Um, so yeah, just working with a lot of way more talented artists than I am to like get it, you know. You feel like there's kind of a personal connection, you know, based on the people who constructed it, that you sort of, there's a part of them that goes into that when they make it, just like with any other piece of art. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we had such a great group of guys that were just like, and it's the same thing with any animator. It's like the, the person animating is actually the actor, you know what I mean? So they're bringing something uh, to it. So for sure, they're, they're, their fingerprints are all over it, more than just their actual fingerprints of building it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, we're certainly in interested about this movie, yeah. so we certainly hope to catch it while we're still around for the Dallas Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, it certainly sounds intriguing, so we don't say too much about it, but <laughs> all you got to say is animatronics and we're on board. Yeah, so. yeah I figured. All right. <laughs> we do have one question. Oh, yes. One, nerd show. Absolutely. Okay, great. There is one question we're asking everybody, since we are that nerd show. If you could be involved in Star Wars or Star Trek, either one, which would it be, and what or what way would it be? I mean, it would be Star Wars for okay. me, but it's just, I, I don't have anything against either, like, Star, I feel like I have to preface it, like, that Star Trek's fine, you know? I just grew, like, Star Wars was the first thing I had on VHS that I just watched religiously, and it's just, that's what happened, you know? It could have been Star Trek, it could have just been sitting there and I grabbed that by accident, but yeah, Star Wars. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you.